And a very, very warm welcome along, everybody. How is everyone doing here on this fantastic Wednesday afternoon? It's time for what feels like the annual Macago redo. We did one in March last year as well. Welcome into Adrian, to Horizons, to Tom Fanto, to Paul Anthony. Thank you for pointing out the typo in the title. That is now fixed. To Dante Malik, to A Gamer's Tale, to Gemma Barnes, to Joel Cost, to Seth Kearney, to Black Eskinor, to Gordon Hall, to Joking Alpaca, to Hannah Welsh, to Deadpool, to Royal K-Man, to everybody in the chat. I hope everyone's having a fantastic start to your day. I am going to be having a much better day once we've got Macago over the line. Goodness me, this one is going to be tough, and I think it's going to be more of a test of me than it is a test of the Pokemon. We know this Pokemon's not really suited to solo challenge runs, and it was our slowest Pokemon for the longest of times until Shuckle managed to get an even slower time by a couple of minutes a few months ago. And I am very, very much looking forward to seeing if I can get sub three hours once more with Macago. It happened last year. Let's see how it's going to do this year. We've got just Smog to start, as Joel has mentioned. And that's not going to change until level eight. So enough faffing about. Welcome in Animaster. We're going to get the timer going. Now I have just taken an antihistamine because I've just chopped the grass outside. So let's hope that kicks in in the next little while. And we're starting off with a Pidgey. We're slower than the Pidgey. Smog misses first time. But at least we've poisoned. Goodness, our defense is terrible. We've already used a berry. And we knock it out. Hallelujah. We're going to be going on the hop it grind on this one. I reckon it's going to be the safest way to level up to seven. Because Caspi's absolutely no use. We just need these 5% hop it. And if you've seen our endeavors trying to get Paris, it's easier said than done to get a 5%er. But there is our first 5% hop it. The only thing it can do is splash. And we're going to be taking full advantage of that. Smog is such a terrible move, isn't it? We have knocked out our second Pokemon, though. Let's try and find our third. It's going to be one of the slowest starts we've had in a while. We haven't had to do a struggle start in a while, but this is probably going to be one where struggle is appropriate. And not because we can't hit. Because Smog is just that bad. So let's try and find another Hoppip. We could be here a while. But it's absolutely imperative that we get hop it. Because anything else will be wasting potions, will be wasting time and energy. And it'll just be a bad time all round. But once we get to level 8, we're going to be able to utilise our 70 in special attack, which is really, really good for early game. Exactly, Hoppip is so useless it can't even splash right. Everybody knows my feelings on the Hoppip line. I am not a fan of it. And we've accidentally engaged Caterpie in battle and took a bit of damage for us since there. Come on, Hoppip. Now, unlike finding the HM friends, this is part of the run. There's nothing we can do to eliminate the RNG here. Welcome in, Malik. How are you today? Three... Three smogs in a row missed. Fantastic. Level six acquired. Two more levels. Our first major destination with this is going to have to be National Park for the Quick Claw. Because goodness me, we're not going to outspeed anything this run otherwise. I'm glad you're doing a little better. We do get Flamethrower at 36, thank goodness. Thank heavens for small mercies, eh? So yeah, as Tom said, your my favourite runs as well are either the ones that are going to struggle or the ones where I think I can get top 10. There comes Post. I will check that on my first break. We aren't going to be able to flee from anything reliably, okay? That's another part of the issue with Slugma. 
Let's try a different patch of grass, shall we? See if there are a different Pokemon here. Just about got away from that Pidgey there. So don't expect a quick time. Just expect a time. We're in it for the long haul today. There's another Hoppip. We're about halfway there now. Gonna grab that antidote while I remember. Yep, the Hoppip encounter rate is 5%, but it's still probably the best option we've got. Which is a sorry state of affairs, I know. But such is life on the Slugma run. It is a very sluggish time, you're not wrong. At least there's very little pressure on me at this part of the run. Let's try reseeding a little bit. Yeah, if we'd have started with Ember instead of Smog, this would have been an entirely different beginning. At this point, I feel like I might find a shiny in, in this run with all the grinding we've got to do. So one in eight, one nine, two chance of finding a shiny. Ooh, interesting you've said that, Terados. I actually have one made up, which is Water Fire based off Slugma and, Slugma and Macago. It's called Aquago. I've got some artwork for it somewhere. That's something I could show you at some point. See if we all want to see how it goes. Getting a little bit fed up waiting for good old Hoppip to arrive in a again. I'm hoping that complaining will be enough to get another one to appear. 5% seems very, very high compared to the 1% encounters until you ha actually have to get the 5 percenters. You know, we've only got a single power point of smog left. We'll use it on this lady, but we'll poison it. Then we'll just struggle. We might as well now. Level 7 acquired. One more level to go. Let's use a oh, single solitary potion, shall we? Because I made the Pokemon myself, I decided not to start with Splash. I I didn't want the same start as this run. I recorded the Gligar run, but it never got released. I wasn't quite happy with it. It's happened a few times in recent memory where I've recorded runs and there's just been something bugging me about it. I think I gave Aquago a signature move that I made up. It was a while since I've created that. I'll have to go back and look at the files. But it's something we can look at, maybe if we have time after the Clodsire run. Oh, what a tease. We are agonizingly close to Ember. There we go, we have Ember, we can progress in the game. It's fine. Potion, PlayStation Network, Cureberry. Into Mr. Pokemons we go. Mystery Egg acquired. Let's see how we go on against the first rival battle, shall we? 
We're going to smoke to get the poison. Then we're just going to end there. Triple question mark is defeated. He goes away. And we get... Now we get a hop it when we don't need one. I'm going to ignite you for the hell of it, hop it. I swear this game knows what I'm trying to do. It'd be fun if a stranger did tell you to leave. Probably did happen in one of the games, but I can't recall it off the top of my head. That is a little bit of a plot hole in Gen 2. Where did the eggs suddenly come from? There we go, youngster Mikey is defeated. Taking full advantage here of having the bug types early on. This is going to be one of those runs where you can't really do too many pre-battles. I mean, Professor Elm's in cahoots with Jasmine, so I'm not surprised that he's not a great Pokemon professor. Let's get the Bitterberry, and let's make our way into Violet. One final encounter, hopefully, before Violet here. And that Bell Sprout is a sign that we should be going into Sprout Tower. We need to do everything in our power to get as leveled up as possible before, before taking on Faulkner. And hopefully, Ember will be strong enough to take out Faulkner before his mudslap takes us out. Because we have no levitate today. I mean, it's not slander if it's true to Rados. We've all seen how accurate her Iron Tail is. We're getting a lot of encounters in Sprout Tower today. That's very rare. I'm not complaining. The more rats we can beat up, the better. This Slugma's Scottish, so it's actually committing willful fire-raising, not arson. Eight power points should be more than enough to take on the Elder at the tippy-top of the tower. Let's see how we get on, shall we? Level 13 acquired. Nice burn on the Hoot Hoots there. It should just be one shot on the Bell Sprout. Let's do a heal for PP Porpoises and then let's make our way 
into the first gym together after almost a quarter of an hour. So nobody's surprised we don't outspeed the Spearo there. Two shot though is not terrible. Let's move on to the second bird keeper. Very, very nice. We're going to do the Faulkner special here of Potion and Berry. Let's take him on at 14 minutes. One shot on the Pidgey is very nice. He's going for Gust, which is good. That means we can two shots and we are through Faulkner in 1421. First gym down. And now we've got a relatively easy section, comparatively speaking. Have a good time at work, Seth. Thanks for popping in. You're going to get the Purrs Cure Berry to cure our Purrs later. And now let's see how we get on against Youngster Albert. Don't drink me, Zubat. To be fair, I'm not even sure I'm going to do the Whooper on this run. Hoping for a big time save. I know where the big time losses were last time. And by last time, I mean first time. We do know that sub three hour is possible with my routing on the cargo. The rest of it is just a lot of luck. I didn't actually mean to take on Youngster Gordon here. Closest battle we've had so far, Gordon. I will say that. Your whooper came very, very close to knocking me out there. I'm looking forward to the Quagsire Rido, actually, to talking to whooper. We do have Plodsire coming up on Friday, though. I'm always proud of Wooper. So we're going to be doing Cooper into Clod Sire on Friday. Should be a lot of fun. I don't have plans in the near future for that Pokemon Malak, but never say never. Let's get the second PlayStation Network Kyoberry. Good morning, Peter. How are you today? I hope you had a lovely rest of your day yesterday. Bruxius would be interesting. It's ostensibly Water Jinx, isn't it? And at 17.45, we're pausing the time to catch the HM friends. Looking for a Psyduck and a Paris here in the forest, as always. And if it's anything like the Hoppips, we could be here a while. Here's Psyduck. Psyduck's been caught. Let's look for Paris. Mm. 
Yes, I believe Him's Mad World gave you the green name yesterday, Peter. So welcome into the HM, friends. And let's hope that your green name will bring us luck in finding this Paris. Good news is, after this Paris, we've only got one more specific Pokemon to look for. And once again, 5% is feeling like 1% here in the forest. Another side up. We don't want a double duck, though. Triple duck, even. Let's see if we can just get this bloody Paris. I can assure you Paris does exist in this forest. We've seen it many, many a time. Paris is scared of fire. It's got a quad weakness. We'll eventually find it. I am sure of it. For an unspecified definition of eventually. Still no parish yet. Let's reseed the forest. There we go. How nice to have your presence, Paris. Now, if you could stay in the ball, I'd be very, very happy. If you could stay in the ball, I'd be very, very happy. Thank you, Paris. Now, what we're actually going to do here is we're going to drop a hard save, which might seem a little bit strange, but I am now going to reset the game and change the time. There are a couple of bits that I need to do for this. I need to make sure the game hook is still active. I'm going to change it back to daytime. The reason I'm doing that is so that we can do a little bit of grinding here in the forest. So I just need to make sure that game hook is Fully, fully talking to the game again. And then we can get on. We're doing a bit of grinding. It makes sense to do the grinding in the forest. Welcome in, Shawnee. How are you? I'll tell you what. I, yes, yes, they are encounterable tiles. We'll run from that. And now we shall carry on. Going to do a teeny tiny bit of grinding in here. It's the highest levels you can get, but this is locked off after you have done Slowpoke well. You're big tired? I'm not surprised. How was your flight? I'm kind of tired as well. I use Gamehook. For me, it's not provided any change whatsoever. I have, I've been running an old version of Gamehook for about a year now. So, for me, Gamehook has and will remain the same, thank goodness. There was a bit of a hoo-ha about changing mapa variety from, or mapa version, I should say, from YAML to XML. And i just completely rewritten my overlay with the YAML in mind. And I was lazy and couldn't be bothered. So, I've been sticking on the old version of Gamehook and I've got it backed up just in case. But it's still very sad that Gamehook did just disappear. Yeah, it was tragic, wasn't it?
There's another blaming Paris after all this time. Goodness me. What? Are you saying I've just knocked out a shiny? I was reading chat. I wasn't paying attention. I mean, I think it's pretty common knowledge at this point that one of the devs of Gamehook was posting on the... Uh, on the uh, Patreon for that particular emulator. Never mind. It sometimes happens. Miss a shiny. I'm sure we'll get more. Can do a reclaim at some point. It's fair we need the experience more than we need the shiny. Now, we're purposely taking a bit of a time loss here because I'm terrified of Rival 2. One more Ember to go, and then we'll do another set of Embers, and then we should be good to go. Macargo Broom Broom, exactly. Back into the forest we go. The reason I say it today, by the way, is because we get the cocoons. And these cocoon Pokemon drop a lot of experience, comparatively speaking, to everything else. I hope Ollie's doing very, very well now that they're hopefully back from the Vets Animaster. It's never a good time when you have to take something, to, something, someone to the vet. Goodness, my brain's all pollened up at the moment. Congratulations on your shiny bee drill. It's a very, very nice line. It's actually going to be one of my testing Pokemon in the not too distant future. I know, I'm sorry to hear you're terrified of going to the doctor's, Tom. Now, don't tell anybody, but I'm trying to get Megas into Gen 2. And Mega Beedrill is going to be my testing Pokemon. Another Paris with its delicious experience there. I think the Beedrill line just deserves more love in general. Couple more encounters, then we'll go then we'll go into Slowpoke well. Nineteen should hopefully be fine. Hopefully be fine team. Alright, let's do a cheeky little pee pee heal. Then let's go into the Slowpoke well. We have Mega Dream, Dream Bill. We have Mega B Drill, but we don't have it in Gen Two yet. 
Well, hopefully he recovers very well from his tumor if he can. I hope the arthritis isn't too painful for him. I love the bug type as well. In early generations, they're definitely not great. But I have such a soft spot for them. Judge shy of level 20 leaving the Slowpoke well. Let's now take on one of the few gyms where we have the pure type advantage. And hopefully we'll be level 21 and a bit after we've defeated the shim. There we go, there's the 21. You know, I'm going to risk going in without full HP here. Ember's a simple one-shot on the Metapod and the Kakuna. We'll try a rock throw. Close, but no banana. We'll finish it off on the next turn. And we are through Bugsy. Thank goodness the tumor's benign, Animaster. Let's now move on to arrival number two. Now, this is going to be a tricky one, potentially. We don't get paralyzed by Lick on turns one or two. That's a good start. Croconaw's out next. Right, okay, we're going to throw rocks at it and see what happens. We faint. That's what happens. Right, okay. Not wholly unexpected. Back on the grind we go. Can't really do anything against the Judo line. There's another hop it. We've learned Harden, not really useful for us in the rival battle. But we will try again at level 22. If that doesn't work, we'll go up to 23. Wrong move, Squidge. I thought Rock Throw was just one up press. Let's try that again, shall we? No, that is less than hopeless. Dreadfell City's theme really is a vibe. I'm considering sticking Mudslap on the learn set after we get to level 23, just in case. Be nice if we didn't have all these bloody Geodude. Although I suppose we can Ember them. It's fine. We shouldn't need Ry um, Amnesia for Rival 2. I very much doubt it anyway. As we mentioned at the very beginning of this run, Slugma isn't really designed for solo running. Not sure what it's designed for, but absolutely not solo running.
Exactly, the rival shouldn't be too much of a problem after this first rival fight. Getting very close now to level 23. Gonna start throwing rocks at the flying type. So, hello, Ekans. Nice to see you. Level 23 acquired. Let's try again now, shall we? See if those damage ranges are a little bit better. Let's see if we can at least consistently one shot the ghastly. We do now one shot the ghastly. That is a nice improvement. God, but rock throw is still bad. I reckon we are going to have to mud slap our way through this one. Just going to have to throw the dice here. Through the Croconaw, do we outspeed the Zubat? Yes, we do, but we miss the rock throw, for goodness sake. That was weird that the rival picked Rage that time. There we go, we're through Rival 2. I'll take that time. Blueberry turnovers on the plane, that sounds gorgeous. That was actually a lot quicker than I was expecting for Rival 2. Kind of happy with that one. Yeah, we are onto the food chat. TM12 will probably be needing sweet scent a fair bit. We had two options there, didn't we, really? Either keep on grinding or just throw the dice with Mud Slap. And I think it was more time efficient to throw the dice that turn. Let's take on Specsavers, shall we? See how well we do against him. Damageless spec savers, so now we can pause the timer at 34.15 and catch our Abra. There's the Abra. We'll 
humble time and make our way into Golden Rod City. Now the good thing is, we've done so much grinding, that we're already able to pick up Return. But it's not Sunday. Why is it not Sunday? Goodness. What day does the Poker Gear say? Saturday. It's a lie, isn't it? It's Sunday. There we go. I think there might be a bit of a delay with chat today. I've noticed it last couple of times. It seems to be very high today, especially considering as I'm on ultra low latency as my setting here. Kenya's acquired. Yeah, we just spent all overnight in that jelly vator there. It is always Sunday in Pokemon Crystal. Needs to be anyway. Level 25 acquired. It'd be cosy to sleep in the Jellyvator if no one else went into said Jellyvator. Now we're going to do almost full trainers between here and Whitney. I am terrified of that rollout. And any wild encounters we get are just a little bonus. And apologies if you heard the microphone there. I'm just trying to move you all closer to me. Fully healed up. Let's see how we get on against this psychic. Very nice crit. Hello, Growlithe. I wish I could swap to you. This is one of very few runs where I'm actually purposely keeping repels off while doing grind, because I want all the little experience I can get. Let's do a heal, and let's do even more trainers. Let's 
Sometimes you just have to throw a rock at a ground with netball. No, we're not doing radio tower yet. Really are playing this as safe as we can. Because we all stand very little chance at Whitney as we are at the moment. That's exactly it, user. Let's at least make our presence known in the gym, shall we? The Fire Festival was a hot mess, and so, so is this Pokemon. Let's see how we get on against Last Bridget, shall we? take on the Pikachu lady as well. Amnesia is going to be very, very handy on the learn set. And now that we're level 29, we'll give Whitney a go. Slugman's not great. Did I pick up the Quick Claw? Yes, I did. Goodness for that. Alright, Whitney. I'm not expecting great things. Yeah, that's expected. Very nice crit there. Oh, there we go. Whitney done. Plane badge acquired. We're now 7 minutes 14 ahead. Is it slow? Yes. Is it quicker than we were? Yes. That's all I care about. We're leaving. Whitney, you can't get your badge back. We'll celebrate by getting Juggler Irwind. Exactly, just crit. It's simple. Goodness me.
The sad thing for Shuckle is the fun hadn't even begun, really, with Shuckle at this point. This was the easy part. Actually, we do want to heal, don't we? Let's take on the kimono girls. Level 30 acquired. It's not even the learn set that's the bad thing with sh with uh, Slugma. It's just the fact we are so slow with zero defenses. Nice double fail on the sand attack there, the 1 in 16. We actually have very, very good special attack. Just have very, very bad everything else. I don't even think we should be taking this guy on, but I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. Annoying that he crits us there, but it's absolutely fine. I can't stand this spinner. Spinners really are the worst. Got a call from the bike shop because we've done so much cycling already, and that gets us trapped by a spinner with a licky tongue. Oh dear. Lickitung is one of very few Pokemon that's actually slower than us, genuinely. The way I've always thought of Slugma is it's like a Caterpie with moves. Gonna get rid of Rock Throw at this point. He's going, Luke. He's definitely going. Not particularly quickly with wherever he's going, but he is absolutely going.
Amnesia is how we're going to deal with ice types. With water types. I'm out of heels. Goodness sakes. That wasn't supposed to happen. I would have loved to have seen Slugma get a branch Devo. Iron Snail really should have been a thing. Completely agree there. Thank goodness Krabby has very low special defense. Welcome in, Mazal. How are you today? You can growl at me all you like, Noctowl. It's more than fine by me. I'm doing very well, thank you, Bus. How are you today? Hope you're having a great day. I will be having an even better day once we've got Macargo over the line. I'm sorry to hear you're sick. Hopefully you feel better very, very soon. I'm glad you're doing well, Bass. And we're finally at the tippy top of the lighthouse. Grab the rare candy. Ding and teleport out. We'll see how we get on against Rival 3. I'm not feeling confident again. We shall see what happens. Just 
try that again, shall we? Finally got paralyzed by Lick. Right, we've just got to dodge the curse, I reckon. Power is super effective, of course, against the Zubat. And then we'll knock out the Magnemite. There we go, through the third rival battle. All it took was for him to not use Curse. Body Slam would help because it would get the enemy's... Uh, the enemy's speed on a par with ours. Yes, Flamethrower in one more level will absolutely help. We are through probably the most frustrating part of this run, not necessarily the hardest part. Good morning, East Starstruck. How are you? Oh, delicious. We're able to one-shot things now. I feel like Game Freak must have known how bad this Pokemon is by virtue of the fact that they gave it Flamethrower via level up. I'm glad your car's done. I know that's been a big stress for you. Gaining a little bit more time there, 9.08. We are going to take our first break very soon, by the way. We did one-shot Gengar. This snail showing that it's not terrible all the time. Yes, multi in under an hour. Let's teach Surf and Strength to Psyduck now. Yes, the name is a Fire Festival joke. Yeah, not wrong there. No Swimmer Kaylee for us today either. Fire Festival was a hot mess and so's this run. That's the intention there anyway. Right, let's ignite some fighting types, shall we? I'm very glad we're through the Hitmon line there. It's a very good thing that both Hitmonchan is bad 
and that trainer's AI is awful. Truly, truly awful. And it's almost as if I'd planned this from the beginning. I wish I could say I had. We get the evolution just before Chuck. Which may make us weak to the fighting type. But goodness me, we need we need the defense. secrets. Ah, uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I was fully expecting Surf there, even with the Amnesia boosts. I thought he'd see the quad weakness. Just shows that you can never predict the Gen 2 AI. There we go, we're through Chuck with another lucky critical hit. And look at that time save jump up. Now we are about an hour into the run now, in fact just a little over an hour into the run. So I'm going to be taking my first break after we've done the Gyarados. Because I need a stretch, I need to get a fresh drink. I need to clear my mind ready for the next part of the run. Gyarados locking itself into Thrash is probably the best thing that could have happened there. Oh, the Primate's absolutely terrible. You know what? Before we take our break, let's get another gym badge. We'll take our break after Jazz. We've got a we've got a fire type. She's got steel types. She's very very meltable, and it'll look good on the numbers on the splits for now. Welcome in, Dragon Princess. How are you today? Yep, rocket section, we cannot wait for that. We've got a one-shot three Pokemon first. Magnemite, get out of here. Steelix, you're gone. And Magnemite number two, goodbye as well. Mineral badge acquired. I'm doing very well, thank you, Dragon Princess. And with that, we're going to fly over to Mahogany Town so we know where we're going. We're going to pause the timer at 103.13. I'm going to have a quick stretch, grab a drink, maybe even have a cheeky little Twix as well. And I'll be back in a few moments' time.
and we are back. Thank you so much for your patience. I had a little pep talk from one of the lovely moderators as well. Because this run, it really does take it out of you. We're going to unpause the timer. And we're going to start making our way into the rocket section. The first of three long slogs in the game. And Claire is hopefully going to be our big, big time save. Because we spent an hour at Claire nearly in our original run. One of the weird things about this run is we don't have to worry about steel types, which is normally a big, big issue of ours. Macargo is the Ferrari of slugs. Next time we menu, we'll be sticking the quick law back on as well. Get the nugget. Welcome in, Louis. Thank you for your very kind words there. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Now, the reason I got rid of uh, Harden in place of Hidden Power, I believe, or one of the moves anyway, is because we have great defences already. We've got 120 in defence, so we can tank a super effective fighting hit or two. Our trouble is our relatively lacklustre physical special defence, I beg your pardon. And our quad weakness to water. Right, so we've got the Slowpoke Tail password. Now, let's make sure the game does not gaslight me today into thinking that I've already got the Raticate Tail password. Right, so we've absolutely got both passwords. There is no disputing that whatsoever. We have two passwords. Let's hope that the game recognises that we have two passwords this time. It does. We're through the pesky door. Thank goodness for that. We'll be taking our next break, by the way, regardless of what happens after the league. And then we'll have a little bit of a break and take on Kanto. Get the password there. We'll dig our way out. Thus avoiding a pesky rotator and a very annoying trainer. Goodness me, I hope my neck cracking there didn't come through on the microphone. That was an awful sound. All I did was look left for a second. Getting old. Thank you, Demolish, for your very kind words there. I'm, I'm glad you didn't hear it, Tom Fan, so it seems like user heard it. User must have either very good hearing or very good head pahonies. Yep, that was a neck crack. Sign that I'm in well into my 30s now, isn't it? But if my body's making that kind of noise... Goodness me. Let's dig our way out of here. And let's tackle our seventh gym. At least you have at least you have hair to notice going grey D1. Price being about as useful as we'd expect there. I've rocked the board look for a while now. I've got more hair than normal, actually, at the moment. I enjoy the board look. 
nothing makes me less conscious about my hairline. We are all becoming like Price. We are Poke Boomers. I mean, I've been thinning since secondary school on top. I did not get blessed with good hair genes. Louis, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. That's probably a delayed alert. It's on strike this week. No idea why the, the alerts are so slow. But I really hope you enjoy the rest of the runs that you watch. Grab the Nevermelt Ice. There we go, that's all the bits and bobs we need to pick up in the ice cave. I think our bag is full now, so we'll get rid of the two repels, we'll get rid of the antidotes, we'll get rid of the parlors heal. Get 11 of you. Then we'll fly back to Goldenrod. Encounter a random schnabababble. So I didn't stick a repel on. Nugget. A rare candy. Over to Azalea we go. Dog hole that we're probably actually going to be selling. Honestly, in Gen 2, as we saw yesterday, ground type moves don't come up an awful lot. Now a Macargo with water absorb, then we're talking. Have more bits and bobs we need to do before we go and encounter the radio tower section. Want to make sure we've got all the stuff we need. I am planning on doing more legendaries over the course of the next few months. I've kind of been at loads to do legendaries because they're a little bit disappointing. Macargo with Scold would be fun. Oh, for God's sake. I never speak to him. Ground moves are common in Gen 6 there. Let's do the heal now, and then we'll do a little bit of shopping. I'm gonna pump this thing full of vitamins. Where are those three nuggets to sell? You know what, the 10% of the charcoal is not going to make much difference at all. Going to thin out the inventory at the same time. Where are those TMs? We don't need most of those anymore. Can't punch, not going to use rock smash, can't use icy wind. Don't have a tail to use ice. Icy tail? Iron tail. No Shadow Ball, no Retrest or Attract. No Fury Cutter either. What else should we buy? Let's get two Protein. And we'll get an Iron as well. There's no sense in going for the Carbox. Our speed is going to be Dreadworthy regardless. So we might as well buff what we can. And with that, we can make our way... To the second grind. Slugma's available in Scarlet and Violet, isn't it? Just thinking about Pokemon availability. I might try and shiny hunt a Slugma after this. We have fed all the protein and all the calcium we can now. Yeah, I think I'll do a nice little shiny hunt this evening. See if I can get myself a shiny slugma. 
And I think once a year we're going to do the Macago redo. McMarchco. McMarchco. Something like that. I'll come up with a better name when I'm not on air. I like the idea of once a year as well, having a Macargo with a different secondary type. So we'll always be fire something. Welcome in, Chad. It's definitely going. Ooh, a pretty big redo project. I'm very intrigued, D1. But yes, the run's definitely going. Not particularly quickly, but it's going. And that's the main thing. Mark Cargo, I like it. March Cargo, that also works. It's a very good sign that we can one shot a Wheezy. I always like coming back to certain Pokemon every few months to see how much I've, I've improved. Giraffe Rig's one of my favourite ones to go back to in Gen 2. Ursa Ring's another one. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Miltank redo. I reckon Miltank's going to get a lot of time shaved off her run. One shot Magnemites easily. What about Kadabra? Oh, we've already done Kadabra. Never mind. Shows how little respect I give to rivals. Just a couple more super potions. We're going to need the Scamulet. No, we're not going to need the Scam Scamulet coin on this one, actually. Because we're not going to be getting rid of Flamethrower anytime soon. I'm tempted, you know, at some point to do a hoe and run with Slugma. But I very much need all of your company to uh, tolerate that with all the bloody water types we have in Hoenn. I'm not going to commit to it at the moment, but it's definitely something I'm exploring. Yes, even the champion in Emerald is a water type. Max Eater required. Torkoal's great because it's just pure fire type. Let's do another little Pokemon Center heal for PP purposes. 
And we'll take on the tippy top of the radio tower. Torkoal really does make me think it's part rock. It's a common misnomer. So many people, including myself, until I started doing Gen 3 stuff, I was convinced that Torkoal wasn't pure fire. Level 48 acquired now, we get a rock slide. We're going to say goodbye to Med Slap. And there we go, we're through the top of the radio tower. Get ourselves a sunny day. And the radio card. And we can make our way back to Blackthorn. Should be three one shots here on the Dracini line. Let's see how we get on against the Cedra line. Flame Pro was a one shot on Horsey there, which is nice to see. It's also a critical hit one shot on Cedra, even better. Right, let's try Claire, shall we? Claire was very difficult in the first Macargo run. So she's sending out Kingdra second and Surf is a one shot. Right, that means we're going to have to set up against the Dratini. The Dragonair, I beg your pardon. And I think instead we're going to use the Pro's Cureberry here, if we can find it. And we're just going for that 1 in 4 dodge. I reckon that's going to be the best plan. Which in theory... Should be a 50-50, because we need the 1 in 4 dodge out of one of the two. In fact, we get the triple dodge, including the Paralyzed Cureberry. So now we are at full amnesia for the Kingdra. A 
that's still that's not enough. Goodness. We might need to quick claw after all. Yeah, let's go back to the quick claw. This was always going to be one of our toughest battles. In fact, I know when to throw in the towel at a battle. Let's take on some random trainer, shall we? Hopefully, we'll be able to get enough experience with a couple of trips down here. Level 50 acquired, which is nice. You're rocking a Geodude at this part of the game, Hiker. Not very good, is it? I suppose you got the whole line at least. Might as well get the PP up and the mystery berry there. And the master, I really don't appreciate those kind of comments, mate. It's one of the worst things you could say to a streamer, actually, that. There's a Gligar, four times a week twice, so we'll knock it out. Sorok and Lunasone did very well for themselves. Both sub 130, I think there was like six seconds between them as well. I know you didn't mean to be rude, Animaster. Don't worry about it. I think we're just going to have to try and dodge a Thunder Wave or two again. Why do I keep trying to rock slide there? That that's an issue. I don't know why, but my brain goes two two movements there. Now nah, we're gonna get the rest of the level. On that pesky, horrible route. I really don't like this route. Sort of one-way patches and horrible grass.
curious what that item is now. A max potion, how nice of it. So we've done all of them, done all of them. There is one more trainer, maybe, question mark, that I keep missing, and I think he's on the very, very extreme right. Graveler's not the worst experience in the world, either. Cool trainer, Ryan. Pidgeot's good experience. As it's Electabuzz, actually. Just to be safe, because I'm still not convinced that another level's going to do it. Let's take on the uh, Route 44 trainers. Trouble with close to Simewood is we are very weak to water. And we don't have anything great for the Tense Cruel or Mantine lines, because I, I don't trust that Rock Slide will hit. But in a lot of cases, I will just do the surf over there. Got very lucky with the rock slide there for Alan. Really actually looking forward to the Seeking Run. Right, level 52 acquired. That's not actually good for grinding for the stat experience if they both have good spadef. Because the special stat experience is calculated with special attack as opposed to special defense. So unfortunately, that's just wasted stats there. Which is very, very frustrating. You know, we're going to go back to Pearl's Cureberry now that we've got a bit more in the defense department. There are no effort values in Generation 2, user. Unfortunately. I wish there were. So, for those of you not aware of how stat experience works in Gen 2, what happens is you get your base stats of the opponent copied into your stat experience. Of course she crits. The absolute words I cannot say on stream. I cannot stand this battle with Makago. Goodness me. Just need the miss. Claire, I'm going to have words with you. You're not going to be happy with the words either. How how is Thunderwave hitting all the time? We're not using rest. It's in the rules. Please do not backseat me. Defense Cold Rollout would be terrible at Claire. First of all, we can't get Defense Curl yet. We need Waterfall to get Defense Curl. Our physical attack is 50. It's going to do nothing. How 
absolute and she crits again If you rare count your Pokemon in Crystal, or in any game actually, then you are going to be weaker than a Pokemon that's been trained. Because of the stat experience. I'm not believing in me at the moment, Animaster. We're running out of experience. Starting to struggle with trainers we can actually bloody battle. Oh, it's a sad state of affairs when you're going for a level 19 slow, bro. Let's get in the water. This is called clutching at straws. Yeah, we will get past Claire. Just a case of when. We have a budget versus seeker in the phone, but honestly, because it works on badges, the training is just as bad. You might as well take on wilds by the time it takes to get a phone call. Right, hidden power on the Dragonair. Get out of there. Rock slide. It misses. But we've knocked out the Kingdra. We've got a whole 19 HP to our name. Hidden power on the Dragonair. Please outspeed. We do. We are through, Claire. Thank goodness for that. 53 was the magic number there. You drink that super potion with cargo. You've earned that. We don't have our badge time quite yet, though. We do have this scumbag cool trainer Darren in the way. So we will be getting the split when we get the actual badge. Yeah. Because we don't have the badge quite yet. So we're not going to do the split. We're going to use some PP ups here as well. Hidden power and flamethrower. What are the crap can we throw? We'll get rid of that. Let's see what our time difference is. Rising badge in 137.57, 45.59 quicker than the last run. We get halitosis from Claire there.
Get a call from Elm saying, what the hell are you doing? Why are you running a Macargo? It's not the Pokemon I meant to give you. Get it back here. I'll give you something decent. But nowhere can miss it. I'm assuming it's the Rising Badge because it lets you go up Wars Falls. I swear I bought Max Repels earlier. Yes, they're so far down now, though. We can breathe a sigh of relief that we've made it through the eight Jotonian Gym Badges. You know what? I'm going to take you on today. Megan, it's my time for revenge. Once again, we're just going to try and get as much experience as possible before the League. Some of those League members are absolutely terrifying. Looking at you, Bruno, today, actually. I'll ignite a Magneton. I have no idea what Makago's Gem 4 learn set is, so I wouldn't be able to tell you straight off the bat, combined with Claire's learn set, whether it would be easier or harder. Yes, I want to get through the work pool, please. This Farfetch'd is actually a really important battle in some of the uh, Smeagol runs. She has Gyarados. Interesting. We've got Rock Slide for the Gyarados, at the very least, that would be super effective. I've not looked into it yet, Gemma. I was far, far too tired after stream. Oh, for God's sakes. I thought this would be a safe battle. Let's get to the beginning of Rena again, shall we? Forgot to state before her, so we're just going to do a cheeky little rewind. Going back in time. Well, it unpause the timer again. We should be good if I don't bloody hidden power the star me first time. There we go. I very much doubt Macargo's going to be on page two. I love this thing, but I don't have that much faith in it. It was a range after all of that. I really hope it goes faster too, Peter. Oh, for God's sake, Rain Dancer. We need sub two hours to get onto page two now on the main leaderboard, so we will hopefully be higher up on page three. But we definitely won't be on page two.
Max elixir acquired. A wrong repel. We're going to use a super repel here. Get the HP up, we'll also get Earthquake. And let's take on the rival for the, hopefully, hopefully the final time. There is a chance we might need to take him on again, though. Let's rejig our moves. He outspeed the Hornser at the very least. We are just about getting ready for the league, Seth, yes. This is the only run of the day today, Peter. It's a redo, so we do just one redo on the redo days. And we'll say thank you to Kenya, to Abra, to Cider, and to Paris, and to all you lovely green names in the chat. Gonna get our four full restores. While we're here, we're also gonna pick up some more max potions. We'll get some more max repels just in case we need them. Use the HP up, put the quick claw back on. And let's take a look at our stats going into the league, shall we? We are level 57 with 163 HP. We're holding the quick claw with flamethrower, rock side, amnesia, and hidden power ice. We've got 106 in attack, 181 in defense, 140 in special attack, 140 also in special defense, and just 79 in speed. Those are the out-of-battle stats. They will get boosts from the badges in battle. Let's take on Will, our first Elite Four member. He leads with Zartu. Zartu goes straight for a Psychic, so we can knock it out in one. Have a lovely day, Dragon Princess. Thank you for popping in. Slowbro setting up on us, goodness me. Throw it at least. Double slap does a whole 2 HP worth of damage. And not quickly, not elegantly, but we are through Will. Where are them full restores? There they are. Up to the super top you go. Let's take on Koga, shall we? Thank you for popping in, Animaster. Have a lovely rest of your day. Rock slide hit, and we are through Koga. Let's take on Bruno. Bruno does have the type advantage over us. Let's see how we get on. We range the hit on top, which isn't good, but we can knock it out on our second turn. One shot on the hit on Lee. Take some damage off the Hitmonchan, but that gets knocked out. Hidden Power Ice for the Onyx. I'm going to try flinching this. Or oh, Cross Shot can miss. Fantastic. We're through on our first try. Right. Karen could prove to be problematic with her sand attacking ways. We'll have to see how we get on. Sand attack failed. That's a very, very good start. Gengar next. Interesting. It's going to curse us. It always was going to. We'll continue with Flamethrower for Murkrow because it's 100% accurate. We can Flamethrow the Vileplume and I, then I think it's just Houndoom left. 
Handoom, a rock slide hits first try. Damageless Karen grown to level 60. Option to learn Body Slam. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to get rid of Rock Slide, actually. Might prove to be... Actually, no. Change of mind. No Body Slam. Rock Slide might be handy for Lance here. Nope, this Macargo is just a vanilla Macargo. We are, however, holding the Quick Claw. Quick Claw activated there. Interesting, the level 50 came out first. Didn't get burnt, obviously, because we're a fire type. Just two Dragonite left to go. That's Dragonite number one. And that's Dragonite number two. And we are through Lance in a time of 148.53. And let's get the lead time. Yes, first time, Lance. Very happy with that. And can you believe we're already another hour into stream? So I'm going to take a very quick break while the end credits roll. Going to have another little stretch and get ourselves ready for Kanto. So don't you dare go anywhere. Kanto is next. And we are back. Thank you so much for your patience there. We are ready to take on Kanto. So we're going to unpause the timer and get ourselves underway.
So we are about 50 minutes ahead of our original Macargo time at the moment, which is very, very nice. And we're going to retrieve the HM friend, so it's a warm welcome back to Kenya, Abra, Sidek, and Paris. And we'll make our way towards Ecritique. Now, there is one slight issue in this place. I've forgotten exactly the routing to get to Defense Kel, because it's been so long since I've got Defense Kel. There is a slight chance we might need it at red. Hopefully we won't. My trouble is I've also forgotten which one it is. You know, muscle memory saved the day there. Good afternoon, Anderson. How are you? You tell me, is McCargo winning the league in st with style and grace? This spinner. He's got super glue face today. I'm glad you're doing all right. So we've got about an hour left together, hopefully, to reach my target time. I'm hoping to get under 250. I think that's a very realistic expectation for McCargo. This run is definitely not easy. But it's very, very doable. And of course, the first thing we're going to do in Kanto is the last thing we do in Shoto. We're getting another rare candy, this time from the chairman of the Pokemon Fan Club. While we're in the neighborhood, we'll take on the wrong trainer there. I don't listen to the same music, but according to this, it's something to do with uh, Sun and Moon. According to the little thumbnail in VLC player. <laughs> Didn't expect to get paralyzed of all things in this battle, but stranger things have happened. I'm just going to persevere. There we go, we're through Surge, just about. Let's now take on Erica's gym. This should be nice and simple. I reckon our next big issue is going to be Misty. I'm going to give her one try. 
on the normal routing. And if we don't defeat her on our first try, then we'll do her last after blue. Just Blossom left to go. There was one gym, I believe, in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. It has been many, many years since I've played it. Erica, by the way, in 154.47. There were still the totem challenges in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. Yes, a tourist kind of gym, wasn't it? In Oh, the city with the nice little park at the back of it, maybe, I think is where it lived. I've forgotten the name of that place. Why did you go for Supersonic? Soul Badge acquired in a 155.48. It is absolutely a hot mess, Kim. Exactly what you'd expect. The anime and the... Uh, Games have completely different teams working on them. So there are always going to be some discrepancies between the pair. Exactly. Looks to me in the game as a psychopath, but in the anime, it's just an embarrassing mother. And then in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, they stripped a lot of personality away from Lucamine, didn't they? Alright, so we could have a couple of issues with Sabrina. What with her definitely outspeeding us. Let's get comfy and see what happens. One shot on the Peskion. One shot on the Mr. Mime. Psychic hits us for a little bit of damage, but we one shot the Alakazam. Very, very, very nice. Marsh Badge in a 157.44. Just in case we'll get the machine part now. And time for the f third and final slog of this run. It's our good friend Nugget Bridge. The Quick Claw is absolutely doing work. I think it's like a 24% chance. So one in four ish hits should be Quick Claw proc. Honestly, I don't think there's any other item that we need on this McCargo. That wouldn't surprise me either, Deadpool. It was a complete accident that Lucamine was so raw and unabashed.
Well, let's take on Super Nerd Pat, shall we? Facts. Let's teleport now. We'll take the extra repel here to give ourselves a little bit of safety at Misty. So I only need a super repel for this part. So we'll do this. And then so I don't forget, let's go to Lavender straight away. Pick up the expen card to expen our radio. And then we'll go back to Cerudi and to give Misty a single try. The stranger things have happened. We might be able to get through. Amnesia being disabled isn't great though. One turn confusion is very nice there. We're no longer disabled as well. There is just Lapras left to go. Playing it not risky at all there. And we're through Misty. Goodness me. Wasn't expecting that. Legitimately thought we'd be there a while. Let's wake up the sleepy Snorlax and run from it. It's as slow as us, thank goodness. Hello, 3Drill. How are you today? It is very much the plot armor, Macargo. You're not wrong. Not complaining, though. Not by a long shot. Nice flinch on the armor star there. Kabutops is terrible. But we are through. Boulder Badge in 20250. Let's take another little safety heal here. Also sets our TP spot back to Viridian after we've beaten Blaine. Max Repel on. And across the open seas we go once more. Right, penultimate gym leader time. This one is, of course, Blaine. He's a fire type specialist just like us. And he is a man of taste. He's got his own Macargo. Unfortunately, Macargo is weak to rock. As is the bumhead fire duck. Fire blast did a whole 9 HP of damage there. And we're through Blaine. And that brings us on to our last gym leader. This is blue. Let's see how we get on. 
He whirlwinds. I was right. Okay. In this instance, it's not a reset, but we are going to have to deposit the HM friends. I'll see you in a moment, Kenya. You're ever a side of Paris. Promise. Hello, Blue. Sorry about that. Let's try again. Triple Amnesia, and then... Ooh. Let's try Hidden Power. Stick with the Hidden Power for Ride On. Alakazam, we shall... Probably rock slide. We miss. We double miss. We knock out. Gyarados stick with rock slide. Pidgeot doesn't have anything for Makago, which is great for us. Level 68 acquired. Arcanine comes to say hello. Raw fails. We'll finish it off with a hidden power. And then because the rain is falling, we'll hidden power the executor. There we go. We are through blue. That's the Pokemon Squidge. And for the second time this run, welcome back Kenya Abra Cider Comparis. We will now nigh we will now fly to Pallet Town. Have a little chat with Oak. We'll get ready to settle down for what will be probably a very, very brutal fight. Ten red candies acquired, that's what we like to see. One final heal of the run. While we're here in the bag, what we're going to do is we're going to use that last PP up on a rock slide. I know we got to 100 resets off Claire. In the first run, Tom. Or thereabouts. Let's drop ourselves save. And let's see what happens against Red. We dodged the charm and we one shot the Pikachu. That's a very nice start, actually. Quick Claw crit, but Psychic does a lot of damage. Taking us down to 10. That's body slam range, but he's just going to surf, isn't he? Right. Not wholly unexpected. Let's use our first three rare candies. Mudslap's very frustrating there. And Surf still obliterates us. Level 74. Let's see how we get on now. I'm just going to put Amnesia in first spot. Welcome in, Kambe. How are you today? And we're paralyzed. Might as well have all the rare candies in. I 
I still want to dodge the charm. And he paralyzes us on the last opportunity. Of course he does. One day this rat will miss. Not today. Very nice quick claw proc there. We do have Sunny Day, which we will teach over Rockside. I don't know whose broly idea it was to put a mud slap on that pesky on, but it's very frustrating. Let's try again, shall we? And of course, thunder crates through the sun. I hate this rat with a passion. This is not a fun battle. Especially with that pesky Pikachu. And then that's pesky on being even worse as well. Yep, pesky on ruins it with mud slap. That strat doesn't work either. It's even a range on the Espeon at level 78 with a sunny day. Of course, the one time the Quick Lord procs is the one time that I selected Sunny Day first. For goodness sake, game. Give it a couple more and then get some rare candies, I suppose.
Last choice is down. This is good. Right, we're going to have to sunny day the Snorlax. And we're paralyzed, which isn't great. No, we're in a loop with that Snorlax. A loop sometimes happens. Happen, I should say. Let's very quickly, for the third time, say thank you to Kenya, Abra, Psyduck, and Paris. And suddenly it's night time, which is what we need. So I do believe now. Maybe not. Gonna have to save here. Pause the timer. Hopefully. Because we're gonna have to, uh, Delete the clock file. Six PM, there we go. And we'll now make our way back into the radio tower. Trying to do things with many hands here. It's not easily done. Yeah, I noticed that, KVN. The other option is getting hit very hard by Psychic, which neither option's preferable, really, is it? Soda Pop. There we go. And now we've got to do the day shuffle, unfortunately. Ultra Ball. Fresh water. I'll be getting one of those after stream. So that's one rare candy. Azalea Town. Rare candies is what this is for. X Speed. So we're doing this as an alternative to more battling, ostensibly. Fresh water, we'll be getting another one of those after stream. Yes, it's a very handy way, if you're running game hook anyway, of getting rare candies. Oh, she did not want to change her password there. Let's try again. Cinderquill, what a cute Pokemon. How many do we have at the moment? Eight. Just need a... Let's do four more. Get four more rare candies. Totodile, we've just had Cinderquill. Now we're getting Totodile. Hootoot. Very nice Pokemon. First tried red. Go. 
great ball. Goodness gracious. And we'll do one more, and then we'll go back to red. Soda pop is what we're finishing with. And for three of our blue points, we can get four rare candies. Welcome in Oink Chops, how are you today? Thank you for leaving your like, that is very, very kind. Let's get ourselves back to Silver Cave now. Gwen is fine with it. I'm clearly the only listener to her radio show. So she's grateful for somebody engaging with her. Alright, up to level 82 we go. And let us start off with the Amnesia again. Handy crits. How fun. He's on move there. And he crit again. I am not winning, not at all. But one time he hits then, he paralyzes. And again he paralyzes. Glorious. Aren't, aren't we having fun? That's three paralysis in a row. And he crits. These insane power hacks are not okay. You're not wrong there. The trouble is we have to start with triple amnesia because there's no other way that we're going to be able to survive anything from Blastoise. Nice burn there. Now we ideally need a crit against this Snorlax and to not be paralysed. We're through the Snorlax, that's big at least. Oh, 14 HP. Flamethrowers hit the Venusaur. It's knocked it out. And we have defeated Red. That was 223-27. Oh. That was kind of good. That is an hour and 24 quicker. Why would you have used lefties, Paul? Why comment that now after we've got a huge improvement? What is the need in that, Paul? Because the lefties would have meant we'd have been slower at times, which meant we'd have taken more damage and it would have taken more time and we wouldn't have survived. 
because we'd have been taking more damage from those turns where we didn't quick claw proc. Let's get the leaderboard generated up, shall we? Let's see where we are. I'm going to assume we're on page two of the stream. We are in 48th place, 234.27. We're quicker than Cloyster. Let's go. Thank heavens for small mercies. Cloyster, you're worse than Macargo. How does that feel? Can we get an interview with Cloyster, please? And on the other leaderboard, this is with everything. We are on page five, 134th place. We have a trifecta of Macargo there. 3.47.49 was the initial time, 2.51.47 was last year's redo, 2.34.27 is this year's redo. I am so, so happy with that. I wanted under 2.50, we smashed that by 15 and a half minutes. This has been a really, really fun run. One of my all-time favourite runs. Shuffle's going to get its improvement probably, I'll give you a date that it might be it's not for a while though i will i will let you know that the shuckle redo at the moment is penciled in for the 20th of march so exactly a year from today is when we're planning to redo shuckle we're doing what a week that's how it's panned out that was one of my all-time favorite runs this one we've just done drama from the start to the end let's get through the end credits and let's return good old Kenya. I, I can't press buttons. I'm kind of shaking after that. <laughs> Mailbox, Brandy, attach mail to Kenya. So thank you, Kenya, for your help over the last two and a half hours, nearly. It has been a great, great run, and we were glad to have your help. So we will now save in front of the Pokemon Center now that Kenya has gone home. And we will get the leaderboard back up just one more time. I think we have to with this. We saved from the initial run, we have saved an hour and 24 minutes, but from the Aridu, we have also saved 15 minutes. So both ways, is that 15 minutes? Is that 16 and a half minutes? 16 and a half minutes, maybe? I can't do maths now. No, 17 and a half, 17 minutes, 20, something like that. I can't do maths at the moment. My brain is mush. But this has been a really fun stream. I'm going to be back on Friday with the wonderful backported Clodsire run. That's going to be a lot of fun. That was not made by me either. It's going to be somebody else's backport. It was made by the wonderful Sprouts, who I'm often yabbering on about. So same time, same place on Friday. Until then, have a lovely Thursday, everybody. Have a lovely rest of your Wednesday. And I will see you all very, very soon. Thank you for watching.